In one of my previous videos, I talked about something called crisis investing, and that is the concept that I learned from Doug Casey, who is one of the legendary investor of our lifetimes. He taught me something that in an event of economic crisis or recession, you can identify some of those asset classes which are being dumped, literally hammered by the investor class because they have no other choice. If the investor is running low on cash, especially the disposable cash, then they must have it handy. Then they have no other choice but to dump their assets. That doesn't mean that those assets are being dumped are, are of no good value. It is just going through a bad economic cycle. So you as an investor have to identify those asset classes and ride the wave. One of the similar asset class in current economic crisis is commercial real estate. As I mentioned in my previous video that commercial real estate is right now one of the most hated asset classes of our economic time. Why? Because since the pandemic, we are seeing a change of lifestyle in terms of the way people work, right? A lot of office spaces are being empty because the employees are adopting remote working or hybrid working where they have to be in the office for let's say three days a week or four days a week and they don't have to keep the entire office space occupied all the time. So the companies are actually canceling the leases and reducing their real estate footprint. At the same time, we are seeing the retail plaza are also getting squeezed because a lot of retailers are moving into full online shopping experience and reducing their real estate footprint as well. Combined with the interest rate hikes, which is also putting a lot of pressure on the real estate, especially the commercial real estate holdings, because the commercial real estate is typically financed on a short term basis. Let's say if the landlord has financed its commercial real estate space in 2021 or in 2020 when the rates were super low and now they have to roll over that debt for next term at a much higher rate, the debt servicing cost will skyrocket this time, which will eventually put a lot of pressure on their net operating income which will then put a lot of pressure on the cap rates. And combined with low occupancy, the overall valuation for that real estate portfolio is going to decline. So imagine a scenario where the real estate portfolio pricing is declining, and this, at the same time, your interest cost is going up, which is eating your net profiting margin, and then you have to deal with the low occupancy rate. So all of this is creating a perfect storm for the commercial real estate landlords. So you will see a lot of landlords either will dump those assets or not able to keep the occupancy rate uh, higher, which will definitely Im impact their valuation. But does it mean that the situation is going to remain like this forever? I don't think so. This is a cycle, guys. This is a business cycle where it has ups and downs and ups and downs. So right now it's going through a downward uh, cycle, but it will come back at some point. Now you as an investor have to identify that point because nobody can time the market perfectly, right? So you have to take your position at some point when you think that this is a better position to get into the market. One way to invest into commercial real estate is using REITs, real estate investment trust that allows you to have the exposure into the commercial real estate without actually physically holding uh, those asset classes so in my previous video i mentioned that i can share with you my top five reads that i'm looking at right now which i can take position into one of those reads uh, anytime soon so the first one is realty income so realty income is also called monthly dividend company because they have been paying dividend on monthly basis and they have been paying dividend on monthly basis as opposed to the other companies who pay on quarterly basis. So when we look at their portfolio, they have uh, properties across the world, multiple countries. So they have exposure and, di and diversified portfolio. If you look at their their financials, we will realize that they are trading right now at 45% below estimated fair market value. So that gives you a lot of upward potential uh, right now. Their earnings are forecast to grow by 10% year over year. That's a good healthy forecast. And their previous earning also grew by 36% compared to last year, right? It pays very healthy dividend of 5.48%. So pretty good in terms of uh, not only generating cash flow, but also looking at the upward trend. 
but there are two negatives that I have that I want to highlight. Number one, their interest payments are not well covered by their earnings. And number two, their shareholders have been diluted in the past. So there is a risk of stocks being diluted at some point. So keep an eye on that. Uh, but overall, it's a very good company. Their P.E. ratio is 46 percent, slightly higher. But then if you look at the company's growing 10 percent year over year with previous year grew by 36 percent, not bad. OK, so I would definitely keep an eye on this because this gives me the exposure to be in the commercial real estate as well as in residential, but across multiple countries. So it's much diversified in that sense. The number two is Kilroy Realty. Now, Kilroy Realty provide office spaces. So it's typically their typical specialization is office space, but their clients are top tech companies like Stripe, Amazon, Salesforce, Microsoft, Adobe, DoorDash, right? Netflix, all the big tech companies. So at, at one point it's giving it's giving you the top clients as their as their tenant, but it is also giving you the exposure only to the tech company. So the tech company goes down, that portfolio will also get impacted as well. So when we look at the Kilroy's financials, we see that they're trading at 34% below their estimated fair market value. And it pays a healthy dividend of 5.75%. So very good. But there are three negatives that I want to highlight. Number one, their earnings are forecast to decline by an average of 4.3% year over year for the next three years. Keep an eye on that. That their debt is not covered by the cash flow. And they have been significant insider selling in the past three months. So maybe the, the insiders know something that we don't know. But overall, not a bad company and their P ratio is around 20%, which is pretty healthy. So except the insider selling and their debt payments are not being covered, the rest looks pretty good actually. The next one is Prologis. I mean, it's not very exciting, it's kind of boring, but their portfolio is very, very solid. They specialize in the warehouses. So think about Home Depot, Walmart, FedEx, all of these companies need warehouses and their business model is literally solid. So if you want a solid but not very exciting opportunity, this one gives you something uh, to chew upon. Some of the positives are it is trading at 22% below its fair market value. Their earnings are forecast to grow by 10% year over year and it pays a healthy dividend of 2.76%. But there are some negatives as well that we have to keep an eye on that. Their debt is not very well covered by the operating cash flow. Large one-off activities are impacting their financials. Profit margins have been declining. Okay, it was it is declined 36% lower than the last year, 53%. So their profit margins, uh, they are lower than the last year. The current year profit margins is 36%, last year 53%. So it's declining. And again, significant instead of selling Within, within the past three months. So maybe something they know, we don't know, but keep an eye on these things as well. But their PE ratio is 38%. So, okay, slightly higher, but again, if it's growing at 10% year over year, not bad actually. Uh, but that gives you a very, very solid portfolio. Warehouses, which will always be in high demand by these retailers, uh, so pretty good. Number four is Alexandria Real Estate Equities. So they specialize in a very specific niche, which is basically agriculture technologies or life sciences. And their clients are like pharmaceutical companies like Moderna and Novartis and Merck. Um, so very specific niche. But if you look at their financials, they are actually trading 37% below their fair market value, estimated fair market value. Their earnings are forecast to grow by 33% per year. That is a massive forecast uh, from an earning perspective and it pays uh, a healthy dividend of 4.17 percent but there are four negatives that i want to highlight number one their debt is not very well covered by the operating cash flow their large one-off activities uh, impacting their financial results profit margins lower than last year last year was 8.4 percent uh, the year before it was 21 percent so significant drop in terms of profit margins and the shareholders have been diluted in the past so keeping an eye on these things their their p ratio is not too bad either so i will also consider them to see if they can further improve their financial before i pull the trigger and the last one i want to share with you is simon property group they typically hold the 
premium outlets, the shopping retailers. Right now it is in the declining trend, but I would keep an eye on them because they own a lot of shopping and dining and entertainment uh, type of the buildings. So at some point they will definitely come back, but right now it's going through a rough time. But their financials are looking good actually, trading at 30% uh, lower than their uh, estimated fair market value. Their earnings is, is supposed to be growing at 12.2% year over year. Pay a high dividend of 5.36%, and trading at good value compared to its peers and industry. So a lot of positives, but only one negative I wanna highlight is debt is not very well covered by the operating cash flow. So apart from that, I think they're pretty good, pretty solid. Uh, I will keep an eye on these five months, but if you want me to pick one of them, I would definitely pick Realty Income because that is very solid, very diversified portfolio, not only focused on commercial real estate, but also they have exposure into residential real estate, paying dividend on a monthly basis and have grown at 36% compared to last year. So very solid company. I would definitely pull the trigger on this one before looking into the other ones in my list. I hope this is helpful. Put your comments down below, ask me any questions. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you in my next video. Take care.